Oh, what's this big box all about? Ah, it's from Canada, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's from Zeke Kovacetic, my Canadian friend from the YouTube. And we had this uh, plan. We did a candy exchange. I sent him a box full of uh, candy we got here that they don't got there. And he in, in turn sent me a box of candy that uh, uh, they have there and we don't have here. So I'm gonna get to opening this and, you know, I'm gonna uh, link into the description. And also, I'm gonna attach this video to Zig's video. So since he already got my package and did a video on it. So yeah, this is so, it looks so compact, you know, it's so tight, tightly shut, I'm gonna have to skin it like an animal. <laughs> Using a kitchen tool for this. I'm totally, I'm sure I'm slicing some, you know, tendons and nerves, removing this. Son of a There's no hatch in this goddamn box if you're thinking. Yeah. Oh, can I pry it open from here? Yes. Ah, oh, thank god I didn't slice any of the really the uh, good innards. Ah, okay, let's see what we got. Oh, I've always wanted some tissue paper. Man, you know what to give. Okay, let's see, let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, Tim Hortons, uh, always fresh, tojers, fresh, fine, grand coffee. Ah, you sent me coffee. No, I'm not really a coffee drinker, but, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I could really tell the difference between, you know, a good coffee and a bad coffee or something like that, but, you know, I know you drink coffee in most of your videos, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's definitely something I'm gonna try on this video. Uh, let's see, oh. Uh, Reezy pieces. <laughs> you know, looks looks like something. Uh, uh, peanut butter candy in a crunchy shell. <laughs> I can't pronounce that. I'm not even gonna try. Um, coffee crisps. Ah, you know, I, even though I'm not a big coffee drinker, I do like coffee flavored stuff. I do love coffee, like uh, coffee chocolates and all that sort of stuff. Ah. Uh, Caramilk. Uh, caramilk. I can't pronounce anything. Uh, more caramilk. Yeah. Milk chocolate with caramel, I presume. Let's see. Warheads. You know, somehow I have the feeling these will be some pussy-ass mild stuff, you know. Of course, you know, calling them warheads and they're like, <laughs> just, you know, tickling on the tongue. <laughs> we'll see about that. Wonka Rainbow and uh, nerds <laughs> rainbow nerds <laughs> the nerds are gay um one but you know i didn't think that was a real brand or maybe it's just you know as as a movie pro promotion thing or something but yeah willy wonka's <laughs> rainbow nerds what maple syrup you sent me canadian maple syrup oh fuck Oh man, that's great! I had no idea you were gonna, you know, service so many of, uh, you know, my senses. I thought this was gonna be, you know, solely candy, but you already gave me coffee, and you know, now you're giving giving me maple syrup. You know, if I knew you were gonna, you know, uh, serve all my senses, this with this wider range, I would have sent you something like a mega pussy. <laughs> yeah, you can get them when you go to the local KKK supermarket. Yeah, that's Finland for you. Well, let's see. Ah, oh, coasters, Canada coasters. Nice, nice. That's good. I'm actually, <laughs> I actually need those. I never remember to buy them myself. Oh, Jolly Ranchers Original. Ah, fruit. Uh, you know, some fruity candy right there. You know. 
Don't know if they seem like they're hard candy. At least it feels like they're hard candy. Nice. Nice. Skittles. Original uh, Skittles. I, I, Skittles are something that, you know, get mentioned a lot of times in, like, uh, TV shows or movies and stuff like that. And I've, I, don't, I have no idea what they taste like. So, you know, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Twizzlers! Aren't these the things that uh, Garth eats in, uh, you know, uh, Wayne's World? At least they look like them. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Yellow ones or red ones. And gonna, gonna have a good time getting into those. Uh, what's this? Canada bottle opener? I have a bottle opener already, but... You sent me coasters? Now you send me a bottle opener? What's this leading to? I guess the only thing left is this mysterious little contraption. Let's see if I can just... What do my weary eyes see? Fuck, <laughs> my fat bear went for nothing. Must get the beer. Just shove it out. Yeah. R. Ricard's Red. You know, Canadian beer. I'm, I'm gonna have to throw this into the fridge immediately so it'll be nice and cold when I get to it. Uh, uh, you know, after I've uh, done all the other stuff, you know, beer and candy is not a great mix, but oh man, you sent me beer? That's great, that's great. I'm gonna run and take this to the fridge and uh, grab the, uh, grab the coffee and gonna brew that. Be right back. Should have waited until it's not boiling hot, but gotta say, I'm sorry to admit, I can't tell the difference between this and the cheapest coffee or the most expensive coffee. It's just coffee to me. You know, I'm really, really thankful, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it would be like, it would be totally like faking it if I would say, Ooh, that's so good. It's coffee. <laughs> and talking about coffee, I'm going to try the coffee crisps first. Since I now have the uh, taste of coffee in my mouth, why not just enhance it? Let's see. Looks good. I really like this kind of waffle um, chocolates. There's different kinds like this, though not coffee flavored here too. Yeah, this is really good. Though the coffee flavor is pretty mild. Hmm. Really good. But, you know, for coffee crisp, I expected a little bit more coffee flavor. Perhaps it's because I just drank actual coffee. Man, I don't want to come <laughs> come out as a bummer. Like mm, I find the coffee crisp lacking in the aroma of coffee. Mm, I can't tell this coffee apart from other coffees. <laughs> Real grateful sounding douchebag I am. Yeah, that's really tasty. That's really tasty. I just was expecting it to kind of <laughs> blow it. Okay, let's try these Twizzler things. 
let's see now. Though I should probably stick with chocolates now that I'm drinking the coffee, but what the hell. I can't wait to try a Twizzler. I used to have like this little uh, Play-Doh toy, like you would shove Play-Doh through it and you know, it would squeeze and it would pretty much come out exactly looking like this. <laughs> so, yeah, let's... Uh... Hmm. That's really good. It's great to have variety in fruit candy, actually, because, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, black licorice and that sort of stuff. So it's really nice to see, like, you know, more than one or two. Well, you know, of course, there's more choices than that, but it's great to have, you know, stuff you haven't tried before. I remember when I was 11, 11 years old, I, I uh, did visit Canada. That was the first time I ever, um, I believe I tried this, and I also, the first time I drank Dr. Pepper. It was only like three years after that that Dr. Pepper came here. And only like, you know, there was this one uh, Greek guy who uh, had this little, uh, little uh, corner store, and they had Dr. Pepper, and... Uh, one uh, my local gaming store had Dr Pepper, but uh, not not like the uh, regular stores. The regular stores got that like only when I was like uh, 15 or something. Ow. <laughs> These are really good. Man, I'm gonna have to save her and try and save some of these. I don't munch them all down my throat at once because I might just do that <laughs> these are really good mm. though I want to talk about something else um, at the same time because you know so that it's not all, all only about the candy mm. I've gotten some new comic books and books one of the books I uh, got was uh, this called Occupants by, by uh, Henry Rollins. It's a photo book, but um, uh, from around the world, like, you know, photos and then like uh, stuff written by Henry Rollins, and I'm a big Henry Rollins fan. You know, there's a lot of like, you know, a lot of different stuff, like there's uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, there's actually <laughs> Black flag shirt in one of the corner stores there, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really a big fan of you know Henry Rollins' uh, rants, and I saw a video on YouTube where he was talking about this book and his uh, trips. He usually when he uh, does his not really stand up gigs, but you know as he puts it, you know his spoken uh, word tours or or uh, something like that. You know he uh, oftentimes talks about his. Um, visits to different countries around the world and, and the stuff he sees and, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, that was uh, really interesting to me. And when I saw that, you know, I was like, um, shit, I want to read about that stuff, you know. I really like to read those kind of journalist uh, stuff from around the world, you know, pers somebody writing from, you know, their personal perspective, like, and then I went here and I met these people and they were talking about this and this and it made me contemplate this and this and that sort of stuff. But to be honest, I've never uh, read uh, a, book of, a book of fiction that really grabbed me. I've read some that I can, like, see objective, objectively, like, hmm, this is really good. It's written really well, but not like, oh, I can't put this down. Uh, I didn't. I, I got that when I was reading the uh, uh, biography of Klaus Kinski, the uh, the uh, conquest of the useless, the uh, diaries of making of uh, Fitzcarraldo by Werner Herzog, and, and I'm expecting I'm gonna have similar th th feelings with that too. Uh, yeah, let's try something else. Have a little zip of that coffee there. Ah. Oh. I gotta say, now that I'm getting pretty much used to it, it, it is pretty good. Um, 
Let's try these uh, Reese's Pieces. Goddamn Reese's Pieces. Get this goddamn... Ah, I'm expecting kind of... Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're kind of like, oh, doing this stuff like this where you're just like, oh. Peanut butter. <laughs> hmm. Really good. Yeah. It's what you would expect from the uh, picture there. Uh, this hard shelled, um, crusty chocolate things with a really strong nutty taste. Mmm. I like that. I'm not a big fan of nuts per se. <laughs> that can that can be interpreted in many ways. But not a big fan of, you know, when I uh, go to like a, a store, I, I'm not a big fan of chili nuts and uh, and uh, pistachios and stuff like that. Yeah, they're good, but I hardly ever pick them up for myself. You know, in, in, in chocolate form. <laughs> now that's what I like. That coffee is starting to sit more and more well with me. Skittles. Let's try them Skittles. But before I try the Skittles, I want to show another book I got that I haven't gotten to read yet. The Good Old Days. You know, um, this book is, um, I, I saw a video of Stephen Fry talking about this book on YouTube, and I knew I wanted to own it, and want to get into it at, at some time. Uh, this is mainly a collection, uh, there's, there's a multiple other stuff there too, but mainly focuses on collecting, um, the uh, letters home from the SS officers from the death camps of Auschwitz and that sort of stuff. Their um, letters home and how uh, how they speak about their job basically, how they speak about it like any other job. Oh, you should have seen how well everything went and oh, everything's done so nicely and, uh, and we just got new recruits and we just got new uh, people in here and blah 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 and uh, you know that sort of stuff and it, it, I understand it's you know from, you know, hearing that, you know, it can be very disturbing because, you know, they're talking about exterminating Jews. But, you know, I'm going to link the video of uh, of Stephen Fry talking about this because it's an interesting uh, subject as well. You know, uh, using uh, language, you know, uh, to, uh, to get people basically to do inhumane things when you dehumanize. Uh, a certain group of people by, you know, uh, like in the Japanese um, uh, chemical warfare plant, the, uh, was it Unit 731, I believe it was, where they uh, tested out chemical weapons on Chinese uh, peasants, and they would call the peasants logs, so that when they would talk calmly about, you know, you need to go fetch more logs and, and we need to uh, cut this log open to see how it fe affects and blah blah blah. You know, you don't, it, it kind of doesn't stop you on your tracks and, wait a minute, what the fuck am I doing to another human being? You know, that sort of interesting stuff. So, you know, that was definitely something I wanted to own. So let's try them Skittles. Nah. Look inside for, look for your Skittlegram to help. Can you fix, ah, it's some stupid child's game. Fuck games! I'm here for the Skittles! <laughs> yeah, these are really colorful. Oh. Huh. These are pretty hard. Hmm. Should have taken perhaps less into my mouth at once. Mm. Uh, well, they get softer as you chew, but, you know, if you ch uh, bite on too hard, you might um, chip a tooth. Mm. These taste a little bit like those, um, what is it called? Tootie Fruity? Mm. Um, does it say Tootie Fruity anywhere? Infinite taste variations, aka tutti frutti, <laughs> mata bella tutti frutti. <laughs> hmm. 
Those are nice too. Thanks. Okay, what's next? Okay, caramilks. Gonna try them caramilks, man. <sighs> you know, trying this many uh, sugary treats, <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack uh, before I go to bed tonight. You know, we're gonna be playing the Song of Ice and Fire today, but. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it foaming at the mouth, you know. Oh, where's the insulin? No, I'm not diabetic, but I will be <laughs> after this. Let's see. Hmm. Caramel chocolate. Really nice. Really nice. Really nice. Now, as you can see, I'm just taking, you know, a couple of bites from each of them. Because there's so many. If I start to <laughs> eat one more than the others, then at the last time I'm like, ah, eh, no more. <laughs> like, you know, I've got to save my strength. But yeah, those are good. Caramel chocolate. Caramilk. Okay, another, uh, actually a comic book series that I got that I really liked was uh, the Streets of Gotham, you know, Batman uh, comic book series, you know, with uh, basically three trades. You know, uh, this go this uh, takes place right after Hush Money. Ah, uh, sorry, Heart of Hush. You know, this this. And this is one of my favorite Batman comics, The Heart of Hush. Uh, yeah, the first one of the Streets of Gotham is called Hush Money. Then there's uh, Leviathan and The House of Hush. And I really like them. They uh, concentrate on the Hush character at first a lot. Uh, with basically, this at this time period, it's Dick Grayson as Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne is now at the time warp again. And <laughs> And, you know, Dick Grayson is uh, the Batman, and uh, uh, Damien is Robin. He's really a loose cannon. I really like the combination of, you know, Dick Grayson, Batman, and Damien, Robin. That's my favorite. I, I would say perhaps my favorite Batman and Robin combination. Uh, you know, Damien is so great, and I like the fact that, um, uh, that let's say that... Uh, uh, Dick Grayson has more weaknesses and uh, kind of blind spots. He is not a uh, he doesn't have the superpower of being a detective on the level of the strength the Hulk has, basically. You know, so you know it's more you know he he fails at times. You know, it's fun. This follows the heart of Hush, where uh, Hush basically uh, surgically repaired. He's he's a, um, a plastic surgeon. He uh, surgically uh, uh, altered his face to look like Bruce Wayne, and basically he goes to these uh, uh, different locations uh, in like the Caribbean and stuff like that, where uh, the Wayne Corporation has these locations. And because Bruce Wayne is in the time warp again, uh, you know he can pose as Bruce Wayne and get away with a lot of stuff and the first book uh, I mean the first trade is a lot about you know Hush getting away with uh, being Bruce Wayne and posing as Bruce Wayne and um, and uh, then there's uh, there's a uh, new kind of vigilante character called uh, Abuse this uh, young child who gets this variation of the uh, Bane venom pumped into his uh, body and he becomes this uh, muscle-bound guy who has these uh, brass knuckles that have like, uh, 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 was it abuse that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, put on them and he punches people who abuse others. Um, and uh, he has a relationship with Robin. I really like it. You know, uh, Zaz becomes uh, a big villain in the second trade, and Zaz um, becomes like this um, major uh, enemy of the abuse. 
and uh, abuse and Robin kind of tag along. And there's cool when uh, Robin has to disguise his identity. He ha doesn't have his mask with him, so he just dips his hand in blood and <laughs> just wipes the blood on his face to give himself a mask. And uh, this also has very uh, this very interesting uh, feature. It uh, has this character called the Broker, you know, who explains that Gotham uh, was basically before it was like this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this big like um, manufacturing and uh, uh, and uh, kind of this, um, you know, this uh, city of steam and uh, and that sort of stuff. Uh, it was like Las Vegas times the ten. You know, there was a lot of different amusement parks and museums, casinos, uh, all that sort of uh, stuff. And we, when it became like this very industrial city later, uh, is because that kind of, that dream kind of fell on its ass. And once it became this industrial city, there's a lot of these uh, Las Vegas-like attraction locations that are left empty, and the broker, um, sells those locations to supervillains. That's why Mr. Freeze uh, hides in an ice cream factory and that's why uh, the Joker hides in a um, in a uh, uh, in a, in a uh, amusement park and that sort of stuff. And the and the um, and the uh, broker has a goon who uh, fixes all sort of trap doors and stuff for you know for the customers. So you know it's it's really great. Uh, so yeah, I, I definitely, you know, if you like Batman, check out the streets of Gotham. And the next candy is uh, Jolly Ranchers Original. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, these definitely are hard candies, you know, these sort of stuffs. Bag full. Yeah, this will take me some suckling. Apple. This is apple flavor. Let's try. Hmm. The good thing with these kind of suckling hard candy things is that they last a hell of a long time. You know, mm, I mainly sense Zig's kind of soft sp stuff, so you know. Zig, Zig sent me like this a buttload of stuff, you know. I did send him some, but you know, this is just, you know, <laughs> a huge ass amount. Um, by the way, it's really good, but it's gonna take a little while. <laughs> uh, another thing I got into was Supreme Power, and I got the first three. Um, well, the three trades that uh, compile the um, basic storyline. I've only read the first one thus far. The second two I've yet to have, have, have yet to read. But basically, it's a uh, well. There is the Max stamp there, so it's uh, you know adult themes and you know explicit content. This is Marvel's take on the Justice League. If Marvel if Marvel would have a go at the Justice League and it's by the Max brand, you know, with explicit content, it basically has Superman, Batman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, uh, I think that's all in this kind of variation, you know, um, so, so you know, it's very interesting. Like, how how would have things turned out if Superman was taken in by the government and not like some kindly couple uh, and that sort of stuff? Well, uh, what if um, in this one, for example, Batman is a black man whose parents get killed by uh, by a redneck, <laughs> basically uh, shooting them, and he becomes a uh, black supremacist? You know. Uh, not all out like black power, but you know, he basically targets on like uh, uh, like uh, um, white supremacist groups and uh, skinheads and that sort of people, and uh, it's very brutal. Rips the ears off of guys and and uh, throws like uh, throwing stars and stuff. Uh, he's called the Hawk Man, if I remember correctly. 
but it's been a little while and I've read other stuff after that, so, you know. Um, I'm still going with this goddamn candy. So, yeah, uh, another thing. Tech jacket. Fuck yes, tech jacket. This was one of the more entertaining superhero comics. One of the most uh, coolest fucking things. Uh, you know, it's a bummer that it didn't kind of uh, lift off. It's from Image Comics. You know, it's by Robert Kirkman, the man who does uh, Invincible, who did Astounding Wolfman, who does uh, Walking Dead. All that good image stuff. Th this character is kind of like a mixture between the Green Lantern and the uh, and Iron Man, if I would to, were to put it cruelly, uh, crudely. Um, well, not really Iron Man. It's more of a mixture between Green Lantern and Guyver uh, from the Guyver manga. A guy gets like this alien uh, super suit that's kind of like you know it forms to his will and. Uh, uh, he has to become like a um, member of this uh, uh, core, this uh, this uh, space guys who use these uh, sort of armors and all that sort of stuff. It, it's drawn really nice. Like uh, uh, there's just so much detail in it that it's kind of hard to kind of show. Like uh, like that sort of stuff, you know. Um, I just really like it. Whoa! Surrounded, but you know, it's a really nice little um, story with a very relatable, you know, high schooler uh, uh, main character, and in an age where everybody's screaming for, you know, we want realism, and and uh, the main characters being scientists or or millionaires or tortured souls, like with all the superhero movies, it's fun to find something that uh, that's you know new. And also, you know, is again the you know the young man who's still living with his parents, who goes to high school, and that sort of stuff. It really gives you the kick of you know uh, if I were in, in that position, I'd totally do this and this. You know the kind of stuff that Spider-Man originally was about. You know, anybody can relate to him, especially the you know readers of Spider-Man and Marvel comics and that sort of stuff. I'm still going with this candy. Mm. There, I skipped time. <laughs> Easier that way. <laughs> I don't uh, uh, throw out all, the, all all of the battery of the camera at once. Okay, let's see these rainbow nerds. <laughs> rainbow nerds from the Wonka factory. You know, let's see if these can if these can rival the gobsmackers. Uh, oh, it's like microscopic stuff, like again, like this, like that, you know. Mm. Real nice. <laughs> but they feel like they're just, you know, regular candy that's just been grounded into bitch. <laughs> But yeah, actually they taste extremely similar to those pop head things. You know those uh, uh, little uh, plastic things that had like a Donald Duck head on and you tilt it back like ah, and uh, candy comes out of its throat. Or those candy necklace things. These taste exactly like those. Exactly. Mm, I like it. Ah, oh, there's still one left. The Warheads. After that, I'm gonna go get the beer. Ah, oh, man. Let's let's get this party started. Actually, before I do a little tease here. No, that no, that wasn't the tease. My battery died out. It does. It's been doing that lately. The actual tease is that I'm gonna talk about planetary. You know, this is the, all the four trade paperbacks that the main storyline uh, has, and I've only read uh, the first one so far. I have a lot of stuff I haven't read yet. You know, and I'm reading a lot of stuff at the moment. I get loads of RPG books as well. You know, I haven't really delved into yet. You know, Zig was <laughs> bugging me. Up. 
about, you know, how long has it been since you bought the Cthulhu Tech book? You know, a couple of months. Uh, yeah, how, how, how is it? What's it like? I haven't read it yet. What? <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> well, I'm a slow reader. But yeah, Planetary is, you know, Everybody was telling me, especially, you know, after my uh, last video where I talked about comics I had bought and what I liked and what I didn't like, all that sort of stuff. Everybody was saying, Planetary, Planetary, and Planetary is uh, Warren Ellis's, you know, comic uh, that's, you know, basically a collection of short stories that are tied together uh, by basically the main characters. The main characters are super-powered uh, people who uh, form basically this group called Planetary, and they investigate uh, supernatural phenomenons that took place uh, in the 90s uh, uh, and um, and there's there's like one comic book uh, long little adventures that they go into and basically having read the first one and I'm halfway through the second one now you know I can see why so many people consider it the best ever you know it's the same kind of thing why people consider like from hell to be the best ever or or you know the swamp thing stuff you know best ever that sort of stuff but if I'm being totally honest, you know, it can be a bit boring. You know, don't don't hate on me. It's just that there's a ton of really cool ideas there. And that's what most of the, uh, basically, the stories in that feels like. They feel like they are, like, uh, show-offs of, you know, ain't this a cool idea? And they are. But, you know, I don't really care about the characters. Uh, there's, you know, it, it's... It's really wordy. The same thing with you know, like supreme power is that it's it's there's so much of people just standing around or sitting down and just talking and talking endlessly about concepts and alternate history and uh, all sorts of stuff that are interesting but as a comic book don't do as much for me as they should there usually isn't all that much visually going on you know of course there are parts where it, where stuff is going on that's really in uh, visually uh, you know great to look at but you know if I'm being honest if I everybody says planetary is the best I like Tech Jacket more than I like Planetary. I liked the Batman uh, Streets of Gotham more than I like Planetary. You know, uh, the same thing with those From Hell and the Swamp Thing stuff. There's a whole bunch of great ideas, but it's just, you know, characters contemplating those ideas and, you know, you read, whoa, isn't that a cool idea? You know, I still like these. I really like these, but, you know, Considering them to be the best of all time, I guess you know I'm not <laughs> I'm not in the uh, appropriate uh, um, target audience for that, you know. Um, but what can you do? Okay, the tease is over. Time to try these goddamn warheads. You know, let's see. Will I puss out or will I show how pussy everybody who's trying these are online? And um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing I'm gonna be in a world of embarrassment very shortly. So yeah, here he goes, Zig. Hmm. A really bitter. I think that's basically the uh, appeal, that they are extremely bitter. But you know, if I'm being honest, they are as bitter as some really bitter berries you grow on bushes, you know. Um, let's see, what berries would be like the uh, perfect example? Uh, I can't come up with, what about, you know, wine berries, or I don't, I don't know if they're called wine berries in English. This makes you create a ton of saliva, which eases the effect a lot. You know, I saw a video clip, Zig sent me a video clip of this girl eating them and she's like <laughs> You know, come on. I guess people are like, uh, do stuff like that when they're on camera. Also, he showed me a clip where somebody had like a little gash on his uh, tongue and started to eat like 50 of these and you know, stupidity <laughs> has, you know, bad consequences, but you know, 
these are good and after you've licked them for like you know uh, 10 seconds they're not bitter anymore I guess when I will uh, bite into them they will be but yeah these are these aren't half bad yeah <laughs> I told Zig I'm gonna no sell them if they are bad but <laughs> I don't have to do that they are bitter I really like like the same way I like salamiaki and it's like um, how could I? How should I call it? When you know, in one video online, one chick said that it's like um, uh, it's like eating acid and not the good type of acid. <laughs> you know, I guess if you're uh, only eating like uh, really sugary and not non-strong <laughs> candies, uh, it might shock you a bit. But but yeah, these are pretty good. I don't know if I want to shop another one. The first one was watermelon. This is blue raspberry. I'm going to bite into this for... Fuck, I'm going to chip a tooth for sure. Fuck, nothing came from the center. I was so expecting that the center would be like hollow and filled with like more of this um, bitter... Yeah. Okay. Let's try the blue one so nobody can say, oh, the watermelon ones are the, you know, uh, <laughs> lowest setting or uh, whatever. Let's try another. Yeah. Same level of um, bitterness. You know, the videos online about these were like, um, almost like these manhood tests of, you know, can you stick your hand in a glove full of fire ants and not scream? What a puss out, man. <laughs> I guess, you know, for me, eating a lot of salamiaki, you know, my uh, senses are, you know, strong enough not to react strongly to this shit. I, I don't mean shit. This, this stuff, because it's good. It's tasty. But um, uh, but I guess it's the same kind of thing, you know, I have the uh, trained tongue as well as, you know, a lot of Finns would have, or Irish or Russians or stuff, people like that would have, you know, trained tongues and uh, stomachs for hard liquor. <laughs> you know, I've been eating strong candy ever since I was a kid. But enough about me and how good I am in eating <laughs> Warheads. Zig was saying, yeah, you need to eat all 50 so you can show all of those guys online, like, what's up? But, you know, those guys and like, girls were like, after just one or two, so, you know, I'm not gonna suckle through, like, 50 just, you know, to show I'm, <laughs> I'm tougher than they are. I know I'm tough! I'm tough, I'm the stuff, and the girls just can't get enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last item is... The maple syrup. Yeah, I have the maple syrup. I was supposed to say the beer. God damn it. I'm gonna go um, get myself something to put the maple syrup on and then it's beer time. Alright, got my pancakes there with my Canadian maple syrup, got my Canadian beer with the Canadian coaster right there with the Canadian bottle opener. Let's get this shindig on the roll! Got my Canadian bottle opener is... <laughs> huh, it was due to the cap. Let's blame the cap. Okay, let's first have a little taster of this since those are still boiling hot. So yeah, Rick, Ricard's Red. And Zig told me this is one of his favorite beers, so uh, be kind. So I, This is the first Canadian beer I've ever tried, so let's try. Jesus! It's total fucking anus pus. 
No, I'm, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, see to make Zig's heart sink for a, a fraction of a second. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Pretty much like a regular beer, but you know, I have a feeling that you know, since this was in the package, it, it's it's been shaking around all that all that. It's you know. It, it you know affects the taste a little bit you know I'm I'm sure there wouldn't be like any foam if I would uh, like um, pour in a glass so but yeah it's it's still good but you know I'm sure if I would have it in Canada without it having to uh, be tossing tossing and turning inside a you know a box in the <laughs> in a ship or something you know I would like it more but you know I like it still um, and just like with the coffee you know the coffee at first I was like oh, it's regular coffee but once I started drinking it more you know it's really good uh, and now it's time for the maple syrup the famed Canadian maple syrup I've never eaten pancakes with maple syrup I always used either sugar or um, like a raspberry or strawberry or blueberry or apple uh, jam or uh, something like that so let's give it a go fuck me Oh Jesus, jewel encrusted Jesus! Oh fuck me! Oh man, that's good. Fuck me, and I do mean in that exorcist exorcist way, like fuck me, fuck me. <laughs> it's that good. Oh fuck me. Or in that RoboCop way of you know in the in the gas station or deli or whatever it was like fuck me fuck me <laughs> oh man a fucking hot burn in my tongue but that's exquisite now I've enjoyed the. Uh, Canada experience to the fullest with my Canada beer, with my Canadian maple syrup, with my Canadian coffee. Although, you know, having Canadian coffee is still, <laughs> it comes from another part in the world, but you know, still, I've had the uh, warheads, the famed warheads, I've had the coffee crisps that Zig was stunned that we didn't have, and all that sort of stuff. Thanks, Zig. It was. It, it's been a pleasure, and we gotta do something similar uh, in the future for sure. So I'm gonna leave you with a zip of this Canadian beer. See ya.